So it looks like we've arrived at yet another fancy place. Uh, as it goes with the rest of them that I've been to. Uh, no signage whatsoever. And, and the trick to it is you're hauling like 60 miles an hour, but you know, going by the speed limit. And there's the gates, like not a single sign. And I know it's kind of on the petty side to whine about something like this, but good luck trying to turn when everybody else is going 60 miles an hour next to you. Nevertheless, here we are. Um, so let's see if the ramp is easier to uh, to get into. Look at this. We, you know what? We may be in luck. Maybe finally, I get an actually well-designed ramp for a change. Oh wow, it's pretty cool. Um, you know, today weather, looking at the weather forecast, it's gonna be kind of uh, on the weird side. Uh, but we're gonna, it doesn't seem like it's bad weather now, but if I turn the truck around the other way, like so, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it's been raining cats and dogs here in Florida. And um, with that respect, not the best situation. You know what? I think we could call this a success. Uh, the only downside is, as you can see, my kayak looks uh, very festive. Has all sorts of Christmassy stuff off of it. Look at that. Um, now that stuff is extremely pervasive. Uh, it it clobbers up the lakes and everything like that. So not the best thing. But on the other side, uh, people in the aquarium hobby pay extreme premium for stuff like this. And I honestly try to keep it in my fish tank and it just never survives. It typically starts falling apart really quick, unfortunately. I guess the trade-off for picturesque locations is being able to actually being able to leave the harbor, which so far is uh, somewhat of an issue. When I called the warden, the game warden, to tell him where I was going, because this is a privately owned land, uh, he kind of chuckled a little bit. And <laughs> this is me going full steam. And the reason why is because all that gunk that I showed you on my trailer, it is all here. Fact of the matter is nobody cleans this stuff. And it clobbers up propellers and everything. So if I could get out, that would be fantastic. Man, this stuff is thick. It's like, holy crap, look at it. And you wouldn't think much of it, but it is, in some cases, like it's pretty much as deep as the lake is. And so it is extremely thick. Um, whoops. And so what, what's happening in this, it grew like a forest. Thankfully, I'm able to kick. Wow. Talk about a predicament. And the sad thing about it is that those clouds that I talked about, 
Well, you could see it in reflections. They're gathering all around me. And if it starts thundering and lightning and everything, I'm gonna have one heck of a time coming back. Woo! Almost out. A little bit more. Oh my gosh! Well, you know what? This being the furthest lake that I plan to go, unless I see something extremely spectacular here, I don't think I'll be coming back. Wow! What a chore! Now imagine if I had a boat boat. That would be quite something. Getting stuck in all that gunk. This being a reclamation lake of sorts, uh, and a mature one at that, we get to see some really, really interesting things. Uh, for example, off in the background there, right there. You know what, I gotta do something about this level. Uh, fix it another time. But uh, you could see uh, cypress trees over there. Those were uh, planted by people and uh, this being, you know, at least 20 years into reclamation process, you could see how much they've grown. Really, really beautiful trees. Um, I've had the privilege of uh, paddling in, uh, if you want to check out uh, one of my other videos, it's called uh, uh, Sergeant B Major or something park or something along those lines or kayak in Hillsboro River State Park and so you get to kayak with giants you know the ones that are several hundred years old what a privilege you could see all that stuff in there see this guys If there's one thing that that plant does, it does a spectac- oh, look at all the fish. It does a spectacular job of actually cleaning stuff. Um, on the downside is it overpopulates everything and squeezes out all the native veg- because all that stuff is invasive. And so it squeezes out all of the uh, vegetation life that's indigenous to Florida so well you know what if we get lucky we might get to see an alligator in the water or rather under the water and I will do my best to capture that on camera if we come across one They add somewhat of a uh, proper ambience, if you want to call it that. Really cool. And depending on um, where you are, uh, if you paddle along the rivers, you'll see how, you know, 100 plus years ago, people actually tried to build homes between the trees. So knowing that it would flood and knowing how strong those trees are, uh, you could see remnants of old platforms and things. People literally living in the trees. So I know this might be a little bit on the corny side, but uh, I got myself a uh, Lorenz uh, fish finder. And uh, considering I have absolutely no idea how to use the darn thing, um, so far, I'm giggling like a little schoolgirl. Uh, I got it to show me, uh, apparently Lorenz, and by the way, this is not an advertisement for it. I don't get paid by things like that. I'm not that cool. Um, but uh, Lorenz, uh, apparently Hobies are pre-wired, or rather pre-built, uh, to accept Lorenz transducer. And so you have to flip the kayak and unscrew the uh, doohickey on the bottom and things like that. And um, one of the cool things about uh, 
Lorenz fish finders is that they have this option of uh, essentially showing you and still have to master this thing. This is literally my first time using it, uh, but it shows you a pictorial of uh, what you see. So right now we're in like four foot of water and this moving picture that you see, uh, if I was to stop, you could see like all the fish and everything like that. It is really cool. Um, when you click on the menu, and you know what, I'm actually shocked uh, by how bright this is, you know, like I was legitimately, uh, here's what you typically find in, in, in like a fish finder. And depending on which picture you pick, depending on how you preload, it has like maps for salt water and fresh water, um, all that funky stuff. So somewhere on this page, if you do this right, um, there's a way to uh, change colors, which I guess I'll have to. But the cool thing is, it literally shows you a picture, instead of just like a sonar sonar thing, it shows you an actual picture of what you see in there, which was really cool. When I was in the uh, shallow water, you could see every outline of every little thing. That thing is really, really accurate. And uh, all those peaks and things that you see in there, uh, those are the tops of that uh, weed that I talked about. So off from a uh, rather long distance away, I thought that this bird was sitting on a giant boulder. And then all of a sudden, I see that it's very far from being a boulder. That is a very very much a ginormous bull as of like a cow um i've seen them in person they are like two thousand pounds worth they're massive when they get up nothing but bulging muscle i mean you you'd be surprised uh local farmers keep them for uh impregnating cows and uh I quite often find them around water. I guess they need to relax after fornicating with so many, so many ladies. They're massive. I don't want to spook him, but at the same time, I'm kind of interested in seeing what he wants to do next. And more so, they can also swim. So <laughs> if you piss them off enough, He'll, he'll chase you in the water. Um, think of a massive bison there as big as that. I mean, he is a big, big boy. He's just sitting there, look at him. And he must have nerves of steel because there's really big alligators in this lake. He is literally, whoo, lost him. He is literally good enough to eat. You know, if this was Africa and this was a wildebeest, the crocodiles would have had a feast. All right, let's get a little bit closer. And the thing is, they're really not used to people. Because um, in this neck of the woods, they, uh, they are no people. Um, you know, they see their farmers maybe once in a very long, long um, period 
um, they are used for meat um, there's no uh, milking of cows here at least where I live so all of them are going to become hamburgers and things it is a big massive massive I mean look at them wow and I know it's kind of hilarious to like fascinated about a cow but the cow that's standing off in the background that I can't get into the camera shot it's literally half his size closer to the shallows you could see like every single fish in there and I know it's kind of corny I mean it's technology that's been out there for a while but for somebody like myself that's never really been able to do something like that this is really cool um, the reason why I got it is uh, outside of the coolness factor I'm trying to learn technology I'm trying to um, you know embrace it uh, for example I'd be able to identify an alligator underwater uh, that way I could stick my camera in there for example um, obviously without harassing the alligator so speaking of alligator there's one right over there So if I see anything, I'll show you guys. Looks like the bees decided to get up. fearless bird between his legs Look at that. He does not have one care in this world. Pooping right on camera. And just like that, doesn't waste any energy, does it? You know, Florida is a remarkable place. Um, there's an alligator in the front, by the way. Just when you thought that, you know, your kayaking day may be ruined by all those clouds, uh, the nature decided, well, gonna give you a little bit more time to enjoy it it looks like somebody uh, hit a stopwatch for a minute and uh, all those nasty looking clouds that you see in the back they have just stopped uh, I could hear a thunder way off in the distance um, and uh, all of a sudden it got really 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 hot I'm talking about certifiably holy crap hot um, looking at the um, fish finder the water temperature right now is 91.5 degrees and this being a shallow lake that's only I think the deepest that I've seen is maybe eight eight feet most of it is between three and five anything that lives in the water the fish the alligators man it must be scorching for them but on the bright side, um, it makes it absolutely interesting to come out to a place like this because you could see uh, every little 
plant and every little fish and big fish there's a lot of really big fish um, i wish i knew a little bit more about fish to be able to identify i know they have tilapias here that's for sure uh -huh. maybe bass but there's just way too many of them to identify and i think the reason why there are so many fish here is because nobody in their right mind would go here on a boat it's just virtually impassable even if you have a john boat uh, considering how dense this whole thing is oh there's a giant fish over there i don't know what kind big big with stripes yeah it would be pretty much impossible to fish this from a boat but hey hey you know that's one of the reasons why I got a kayak. Not to fish, but specifically to be able to get into places. This is a very positive blend between having an actual boat and still be able to go far, uh, enjoy yourself. Very expensive kayak, but absolutely worth every penny. So here I am fiddling with the uh, with the transducer thing, and there's a couple of toothy neighbors over there. A couple of alligators just chilling. And the thing is, you'd never know that they're there because they don't make any noises. Look at that. He's swimming this way, actually. See, I've been able... Uh, essentially, the way this whole thing works is... Uh, you could isolate a lot of the things. And when you isolate all those things, it becomes uh, easier to read the uh, landscape you can change frequencies and things so this is really cool technology uh, you know when you're over water like this no idea what's over there and then you look here and you're like wow so even though I don't fish there's still plenty of things for me to uh, gain from this technology Well, to be honest with you, I think I may have timed it just perfectly because all that nastiness, it's actually on the other side of the trees. It's pouring cats and dogs out. Once we cross this hump over there, you'll see the wind is picking up. There's all sorts of chop on that otherwise steel lake. Oh, and I found uh, something really interesting. Uh, you see those black rubber bands that are holding up my kayak that are supposedly used for um, what you want to call it for holding things every single one of them has giant cracks in it absolutely pathetic I'm gonna have to figure out what to do about that see all that stuff over there yep it's all coming here up in the back you see a tree right behind that tree it's raining and so my goal is to get the heck out of here I looked at the radar and there's a vertical storm coming to Florida from the Gulf so right about now is the perfect time to leave oh and you could see all the uh, see that it was perfect just calm and calm and it's about to change it's, it's about to get really nasty too I got a uh, emergency notification of my uh, radio thing